Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing our journey on the ASICS ASE exam preparation, volume two. Two. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. Let us know how many you get right. Now let's take a look at that first question. Technician A says that high current draw can be caused by dirty electrical connections. Now, if you watched our last video, you know we don't like to just plow through these Tech A, Tech B questions. We take each technician's uh, comment as uh, its own question. Yeah, I don't like so. to be plowing any technicians. <laughs> so let's take a look at Tech A and investigate, is he right or wrong? These are a couple true-false, right? Right. So Tech A is saying now we could have high current draw Weird way to say that, yeah, but I, I mean, is. we have to understand what they're getting at, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're just looking at high current. Could that be caused by a dirty connection? What are your thoughts on that? Dirty electrical connection. What does that even really mean? Um, it, it doesn't say corrode, and we can see if we look past it. Uh, Tech B actually says corrosion. So dirty, I'm going to assume causing possibly a loose connection mm -hmm. or, or not a complete connection because it's dirty. Yeah. L loose connection uh, is going to cause a low current situation, not a high current situation. So I'm going to disagree with Tech A. What are your yeah. thoughts? Well, I'm going to agree with you. And uh, it, the wording is a little strange. I agree with you. Saying high current current draw and dirty connections. What are dirty connections? Yeah. But we can understand what they're going for here. Right? I think so. They're trying to make sure that if there is an issue with a connection, we understand we're going to have low current flow. Right. And in this case, Tech A saying high current. Yeah. We know he's wrong. Which is the opposite. So we're going to say no. No. No to A. No to A. No to A. Uh, technician B says that low current draw can be caused, again, that low current draw, so that's mm -hmm. a weird way to yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. Low current draw can be caused by corroded electrical connections. So that's kind of exactly what we were just talking about. They actually were very specific with mm -hmm. this one. It says corroded. We know corrosion is a high resistance fault, therefore causing a low current situation. For those of you unfamiliar, uh, current and resistance are on a teeter-totter. So if we ever have a high resistance situation like corrosion, then that means current is going to drop down. And the opposite would happen if we had a low uh, resistance situation, current would go up. So what are your thoughts on Tech B? I think that's a perfect explanation. So we're going with? Tech B. B only? B only. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Technician A says that burnt electrical contacts will decrease the electrical resistance in a circuit. What are your thoughts on Tech A? Well, I'm thinking with burnt context, and we had a question like this in the past, and there was kind of some confusion on right. burnt, but uh, it's safe to assume that that's going to cause an increase in electrical resistance. So right. we're going to think low current flow, things, uh, things of that nature. So in this case, Tech A is saying it's going to decrease resistance. Now, you've got to be very careful here, because right. what if it said decrease Current, current flow. Right. So, you know, you got to read these really, really carefully to get these right. And that's why we also do these one at a time. We're looking at Tech A and we're going to think about it. We're going to come up with an answer before we continue reading. In this case, I'm going to say that those burnt contacts should cause an increase in electrical resistance. Right. So it looks right. like Tech A is wrong on this one. Not right. Okay, how about Tech B? All right, Tech B says that an open switch should have continuity. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, one. I think in order to answer this part, you need to understand what continuity is. Right. Uh, and so, for those of you who are unaware, continuity is the continuous path for current to flow. Um, and if I have an open switch, then I don't have a path for current to flow. So, uh, I'm going to say Tech B is incorrect on this one. I, I'm with you there. So, a, uh, a closed switch. And you know, this is a right. good question. I, I do see a lot of my students misunderstanding the difference between open an, and closed yeah an open switch meaning no current flow and a closed switch they oftentimes will uh, invert those we see that pretty right often. a lot of, well especially on you know we're doing practical mm -hmm. things like on an electrical oh, yeah. trainer or something with the switch they get confused with the switch position but right. i mean i think we were safe if we can think of the literal term open as in is it is open and close as it is, is yeah, closed. Yeah, but I can't stress it enough because I do see it all the time. Definitely. We will instruct someone to have the switch in the 
closed position in the of course and they put it in the open more position. often than not yeah they will they will put in the open position so we right. got to look out for that one that could be a little bit tricky so what's our best answer on this one it looks like nobody's right nobody nobody D. no D. one all right let's take a look at that next question which of the following tests would be most likely performed with an oscilloscope all right it's a tricky question mm -hmm. if you don't know what an oscilloscope is or if you've never used one. Daniel, you want to go ahead and explain to the kind folks what an oscilloscope is? Definitely. I love oscilloscopes. I know I, you do. I have a lot of fun with them and maybe we'll do some demonstrations at some point. And uh, what an oscilloscope is, is it, uh, it measures voltage over time. It's, it's actually quite simple. Um, and then we have DSOs or digital storage oscilloscopes, which we can record a lot of data and uh, go back and look at it. So if we're looking for intermittent faults, things like that, uh, very, very helpful. Now, a multimeter reads, you know, voltage or, or voltmeter can read voltage, uh, but it doesn't update that quickly. And if you have an intermittent, if you have a signal like a crank sensor, cam sensor, anything like that, you're yeah. not going to pick anything up. Even in the peak and hold function, it's only every mm -hmm. one millisecond. One millisecond, right? Yeah. Which is so, still pretty slow compared to. Yeah, many of them, those snap-ons that you're referencing, yeah, that's quick, right? It's an $800 multimeter, but not quick enough uh, for many uh, signals that are used in automotive. So let's take a look at uh, some of the possible answers. Here. Yeah. Okay. A says inspecting a permanent magnet or PM generator for a chipped tooth on a reluctor ring. Tag B says testing the voltage drop in the positive battery cable. Mm -hmm. C says inspecting a relay coil resistance. And D is testing the voltage drop on the charging output circuit. Now just looking at that, you know, uh, initially seeing uh, A, it does bring up this permanent magnet generator which that might throw some people off. And this is maybe a terminology uh, issue is uh, I understand what they're asking, but, but maybe some technicians don't. And uh, it looks like what they're referring to would be what we call a VR sensor or a variable reluctance sensor, which is a voltage generating uh, type sensor. In fact, it generates an AC voltage. And uh, can we check one of those with a voltmeter? Uh, you know, you... Can and you can't, right? right? Mm -hmm. For a chipped tooth, that might be really tricky because you, you can see a signal, but you're not going to see the right. glitch in the signal, right? Of, exactly. Say we were looking at uh, a VR sensor uh, for a wheel speed sensor, okay? Uh, if we're spinning the wheel, even if it had one chipped tooth, you would not see an appreciable difference on your voltmeter. Right. Um, so that is not going to be an effective tool to diagnose that. Yeah. So in this case, if you're really sharp, you could probably stop reading right there and say, hey, the only tool for the job here is going to be that oscilloscope. Right, because you're going to see the signal and then you're going to see the glitch or the part in the exactly. signal where it's missing, you're right? See, exactly, you're going to see it. In fact, we do, you know, some people, it's a different type of sensor, but sometimes with hall sensors, on a crankshaft, we're going to have a missing tooth, right? And uh, it stands out very, very clearly. In fact, that's what the the computer's using, right, right. To, to determine position is that missing that missing tooth there. Now, VR sensor works a little bit differently. Uh, it is an AC voltage, and it's not uh, conditioned in the sensor. It'll be conditioned in the ECU later. That signal to something uh, digital that the computer will understand. But an oscilloscope, in this case, is going to be the only tool used. So yeah. we can stop reading right there. And the best answer here, it's A. It's going to be done A. That right. quickly. And if you're not sure and you're not you're not even under you know you don't understand tech A, I would say looking at B, C, and D, uh, B and D are testing for a voltage drop in mm. cables or in a circuit. Right. There would be no need to to use an oscilloscope. You can easily do that with a multimeter. Um, C is inspecting a coil resistance. resistance, which you would never really use a, a, right. a, a, an oscilloscope to do. So That's a great point. Our oscilloscope is our voltage over time device. Right. You know, that's a great point. So even if we didn't really understand. Process of elimination should help you know, like, oh, well, I at least know a multimeter right. can easily be used for B, C, and D. I don't even know what the hell A is, but it's probably that. You know, especially with their terminology, maybe that might confuse some technicians, you know. Right. And then like, I don't which, know what that is. In which case, continue reading and you can eliminate the others. Right. I yeah. like it. Let's take a look at that next question. Technician A says that an amp clamp is a useful tool to use when checking for key off drain. So um, that would be for our parasitic draw or ignition off draw. Uh, if our battery dies overnight, that type of situation, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. And it, we think there might be a drain on the battery. Now, 
Um, this portion is uh, a little bit tricky because they, yes, using an amp clamp is, honestly, it's better than using a meter in series. It's a lot less uh, cumbersome. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to disconnect the battery. And I mean, I still have to wait for everything to go to sleep, but I don't have to worry about a lot of the extra junk and keeping the meter from falling asleep and sure. all of these other things. Sure. Um, uh, but, but anyways, my thought, First initial thought is a regular amp clamp is not going to have the resolution right. maybe to look for smaller measurements. And, and when our max uh, draw is 50 milliamps or 0 0.05 amps, uh, I, I, I'm kind of like eh, if we're using a low current amp probe, I'd absolutely say yes. But they just said amp clamp. Now, I'm an overthinker at heart. So I, before I, Daniel even jumps in, I know that Tech is probably right. I'm just overthinking. And I'm sharing my overthinking with y'all because I think some of you guys might be thinking some of the same thing. But I think what they're getting at is just in general, uh, you know, it, they're saying amp clamp, but they, I'm going to say yes. What do well, you think? Well, yeah, I agree with you. And there's, there's more to it than that. Now, traditionally, uh, mechanics have been using these amp clamps or inductive uh, amp probes. Uh, to measure high current, we'll, we'll measure starter current, we'll measure right. our alternator output inductively, meaning we just need to put this clamp over the wire and we're going to be reading the magnetic field produced by the flow of electrons. Now, traditionally, these things only read down to about one amp, okay, and they have really big jaws. You've probably all seen them uh, if you've done starter tests or alternator tests. Now, about 20 years ago, low amp probes really hit big and they were kind of the cool thing in our industry. And we started measuring all sorts of current. We're measuring injectors and we're measuring all sorts of things and getting a lot more data. But that kind of took off, I'm going to say about 20 years ago is when I started seeing everyone rushing out to buy these, uh, low amp probes. And uh, those can measure down uh, pretty low, low enough that you could theoretically do this. Uh, the only negative is the jaws tend to be quite small, right. and some of these battery, the battery cable yeah, some of these start. battery cables uh, might not work. Now I used to have a little setup that I would do because I like to do it inductively too, and which uh, what I would do is I would put a pair of jumper cables that had a pretty uh, small. Uh, uh, wire that I could put my amp clamp over it. I see. So you are disconnecting the battery mm -hmm. cable and you're just putting a jumper in between. On some cars. Yeah. Now, if it's a Honda, then it fits. it'll fit. Yeah. Yeah. So I do like doing this. And just like you said, you're not disconnecting the battery. Every time you disconnect the battery in these new cars, it just throws everything for a loop. And then when we reconnect, everything's kind of restarting. And if you're looking for a draw, you just, you just kind of upset the whole system. Yeah. So looking for it inductively is a great idea. For sure. And you just have to kind of maybe come up with a setup, especially if the battery cable is rather large. A traditional low amp probe is not going to actually fit over that. So it is an interesting question, but I do think that in modern times, yeah, that is acceptable. Remember, right. if you're putting your uh, voltmeter, your ammeter in series to check for one of these things, mm -hmm, and you're on a setting that has a maximum of 10 amps, well, that's not much. Right. If someone opens the door while you're testing or turns anything on, it's going to blow your meter fuse, right. which is quite expensive and very inconvenient. So yeah. I hate uh, doing that test. Uh, doing it inductively, that's the way to do it, right? It's accurate enough for what we're doing here. So in this case, I'm gonna say yes on A. Let's yeah. take a look at what Tech B is saying. Tech B says that a faulty rectifier bridge in the alternator could cause excessive key off drain. Mm. Is now correct. This, this could be a little confusing for some people, right? Some people may have heard of the rectifier. They know that it's a series of diodes that is turning this AC from our alternator into DC uh, for our vehicle. Uh, but they may not realize that if there's a problem with those diodes, we could in fact have a drain from the alternator. And I've seen this many times uh, when looking for parasitic draws. The old way of doing it was hooking up uh, your, your ammeter to test the draw and pull fuses out of the car. Right until the draw goes away. Or well, even do a voltage drop across the fuses, but if you don't have a fuse because it's a charging system. Oftentimes the alternator's not fused. Occasionally it is, right? You mentioned fusible links in the past and things of that nature, but oftentimes there's nothing to disconnect. Yeah. So if you are working on one of those parasitic draws, don't discount that big cable that goes straight from the battery to the alternator. Make right, sure so then you could just disconnect the alternator definitely. and see if that definitely. causes so, the draw to go down. Yeah, this is a pretty decent question. I'm gonna go with C on this one, and I think uh, both tanks would be the best answer here. Yeah, I'm going to agree. 
All right, let's Seems take a look right. at the next question. <clears throat> I really don't like on camera when I have like stray hairs. It doesn't look clean. I just look frazzled. All right, well, it's recording. Hang on, oh, let me start. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and uh, helping us get ready for this ASE uh, A6 exam. Um, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see any more content, give us some ideas in the comments. Yeah. Don't forget, let us know how many you got right. And if we get a thousand likes on this video, we're going to reveal our scores on this A6. Well, the last time we took it, that's all that's available. That's all that's available. Yeah. Thousand likes. It's easy. Hit like. Hit like. Thanks, guys. <laughs>